Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and I make videos about sewing and my crafty life and today I'm coming to you with a tutorial on how to sew hexagons without the paper that you would traditionally use in English paper piecing. So I've recently made this piece of patchwork, it's actually like a placemat. I think it'd be lovely to put a candle or like a nice little ornament in and I've put some trim around it. I uploaded the video for this yesterday, so this is essentially part two. Um, this video comes first. I'll show you how to make this um, hexagon patchwork without paper piecing. So it's a method called hand piecing. Some people call it American hand piecing. I'm not sure um, as to the origins, um, but it's essentially quilting with a running stitch. I did show a block recently that I did in my podcast. This was the block. It's made up of Liberty and again this is all hand pieced without any papers in it and lots of people said that they would be interested in a tutorial on how you actually go about making this but I thought for ease we'll start off with the hexagons because it's quite a big shape whereas this is a lot more smaller and intricate and I'm going to do sort of a little mini series so the first episode today will be how to do these hexagons and then I'm going to do a video on Saturday where I discuss templates, how to cut your shapes, because I'm actually going to be using pre-cut shapes today. So on Saturday we'll discuss templates, then maybe I'll do maybe squares or some other type of shape with this method. And then the final video um, will be on this star. So sort of building up to something that's a little bit more complicated, but I will sort of guide you through the process every step of the way so if this is something that you'll be interested in making then do stay tuned and the video for finishing this piece so to speak will be in the description below so to start off with like I said I'm using pre-cut hexagons this is because I think this was a lot easier there was no template required for cutting um, there was loads of different varieties of the colors and I had these in my stash probably since maybe 2020, you know, when everyone was buying craft supplies. <laughs> that was my hobby in 2020. Um, so with these, I haven't used that many on the previous piece and there's just tons of different designs. These are Tilda pre-cut. They would be one inch finished with paper piecing, so they're one and a half inch, I think. Um, but you will discuss that. It will still come out at one inch, the hexagons will, even with this method. The company who I bought these off on Etsy are no longer in business, but you can purchase lots of different pre-cut hexagons in different fabric ranges, even in people's scraps. They sell, you know, a big variety of um, hexagons if you just search on Etsy. I'm sure the results will differ depending on what country you're in, so I won't recommend a certain shop in particular. So what we'll do now is I'll change the camera angle and we'll get started. So the first thing that I've done is just selected some hexagons that I like how they go together. Maybe not two blues next to each other. So these will be the hexagons that I'll piece together. Let me just check the measurements. So they're one and a quarter. So yeah, by the time you've took your seam allowance off, they're actually, oh no, they're finishing at bang on one inch these hexagons are. I can't figure that out, but there you go. <laughs> any, any size will do. If you end up pre-cutting your own, it doesn't matter what size you do, um, it will all end up the same with this method. Okay, so we'll just go over the supplies. First of all, if you've got a ruler like this, this will be really handy for marking up our stitching line. I prefer to use one of these which is a quarter inch guide it's just essentially a ruler that is a quarter of an inch that whole thing measures the width of a quarter of an inch so I'll be using that in the tutorial you need some pins and needles I do recommend a thimble if you like a thimble scissors and a pencil I like the mechanical pencils for this because you don't have to keep sharpening the pencil but again any pencil that you have will do 
and I like to use a neutral polyester thread I've said in many videos before I use a fine polyester this is actually um, sold as machine embroidery thread because I have a machine embroidery business and it's very very strong uh, that's why I like it but for the purpose of the video I'm going to be using black thread so that you can see exactly what I'm doing and this is just a cheap spool of cotton thread you can use anything that you've got on hand really and then the final thing that you'll need is a piece of sandpaper this is 600 grit it's very fine um, probably the same as like a low grade emery board um, you don't want it to damage your fabric in any way but this is a very handy tip because what we're going to do is we're actually going to draw a stitching line on our shapes so this is a step that essentially would replace the basting okay and there's lots of templates that you can get for this so you can get them pre-cut um, but because I didn't want to tell you all to go out and buy a set size we'll just use what we've got use any shape hexagons you've got or that you can manage to cut and all I'm doing is I've got my shape on the piece of sandpaper and I'm just drawing one quarter inch in from the edge just like so So if you don't use the sandpaper, I'll show you what happens, your fabric sort of moves like that. So if you see there, if you use the sandpaper that will keep it all even. I'm just going to check these seams because that doesn't seem to quite match. Might be because I'm trying to look through the camera. There we go, I think that was the first one that I did that wasn't quite right. So when we come to stitch, I'll just have to remember that it's that top line, but perhaps I'll try and avoid that. <laughs> so what you can do is you can go ahead and mark up all of your shapes. I've done a few just for ease of this video. You can choose to sew your hexagons in any formation that you like. If you wanted to, you can just sew them in rows like that um, and just keep going for as wide as you wanted to but for the purpose of this video I'm going to do it in a flower because then we'll have some quite difficult seams there where three pieces of fabric intersect and I'll show you how to deal with that. So the first thing that you need is a single piece of thread with a knot in the end and then pick up your two pieces and put them right sides together and what you want to do is you want to line up those edges as best as you can and then you put your pin through the front on the corner right on the corner and through to the back there first time lucky I got it through right on the corner but let's say you didn't let's try again if you haven't quite got those these are pre-cut so they're very accurate but if you've cut them yourself you might find that there's a slight bit of inaccuracy that isn't quite on the edge so just pull the needle back a little bit only out of the back layer and give it another stab put your needle through and there you go that's held in place if you're going to do a hexagon that's maybe two inches anything bigger than an inch you'll want to put a pin in the middle just to secure it again um, but here with an inch you don't really need to so we're going to put the needle through the front and again through the back so again you're looking to see whether that matches up and it doesn't so we'll move over just a touch and we bang on the front and the back and then all we're going to do is a running stitch very very small the stitches are going to be maybe a millimeter and we'll load a few up i would usually use a thinner and smaller needle than this i usually use this needle but i thought for the purpose of the video it's better to use something that's bigger but i always find that a smaller needle makes for smaller stitches so pull that through 
and then I like to do a back stitch every three or four stitches um, some people say to only back stitch every inch but I find it stays a lot tighter if I back stitch more regularly and a lot of you on Instagram that I spoke to said you've tried this method and you thought that it was too loose as well so the back stitching I find really helps so when you're beginning every time you're pushing the needle through you're flipping the work to the back you're pushing through to the front checking on the back through on the front now because I've been doing it a couple of months when I get to this stage and I'm about to pull my needle through I just check am I on the line if I'm not I pull the needle out and do it again so push that through and you don't want to pull tight you just want to pull it taut sometimes I put the needle down hold it and pull like that because if I was to pull too tight I'm going to get my fabrics bunched up so keep it nice and flat and again I think I did two or three stitches there so I'll just load it up again and just go nice and slowly I hope you can see how small the stitches are Once you get in the rhythm of doing this, I find it's a lot faster than doing the whip stitch, even though you've got to invest the time initially in doing the drawing of the templates. Um, sometimes you have to do that with EPP anyway, cutting out. Um, so I find this is actually a lot faster. So we're approaching the corner now. I've done my back stitch and my next stitch in theory would be right in the corner. So I'm gonna take this out and I'm going to drop my needle right into the corner yeah. so again just check you're right in the corner pull it out and then I'm going to stitch this way a little bit more and I'm going to tie off by putting my thread through the loop I like to do it twice you can just do a traditional knot there if you wanted to. Any type of knot that you would usually do to tie off will be fine. And then I cut the thread. I always leave a little bit of a tail. I don't know why. And there you go. It's not loose. It's not gaping. I'm pulling there quite, quite a bit. I think that's my first stitch there where the... Oh no, that's my end stitch. But don't forget, when we get to a corner, we're going to reinforce so we'll do another one now so I always find that I sew anti-clockwise I sew from right to left depending whatever feels comfortable to you I think if you're right-handed you will go right to left so this is my centerpiece this is my next hexagon so I'm not going to go here I'm going to go this way so that the, that the new piece faces me okay so again matching up this corner you won't be able to match up this corner very well because it's behind the seam I mean visually you'll match it up pin perfect so you go straight through the corner try not to go through the blue fabric you want to just get through two layers rather than three layers and you'll be able to feel that straight away not quite on the corner so back through again and just keep adjusting it is very much fractional and put your pin in so we're going to do the same thing I'm going to speed the video up until I get to here and I'll slow it down and show you how to deal with the corners okay so I've just done my stitch right in the corner there and I'm going to do a back stitch and just to lock that in place because when I'm fiddling with the corners I don't want anything to come loose so all you're going to do now is pivot this piece and put it there and you do the same thing again 
and what I really like about this is it's very tactile on your hands you ha at this point in oh yes we've got to go to the top line in this one wasn't it that was me making that mistake um, what I was saying is in doing this method compared to EPP it feels a lot less cumbersome you're not folding papers out of the way it's a bit easier on your hands um, you are literally just handling the fabric now you need to make sure this corner is nice and secure so what I like to do is any intersects intersecting pieces I like to make sure my stitch goes through all three if there's three or if there's four so we're going back to the original piece yeah. and then you're going from this one to this one coming up in the corner again it doesn't matter if you come up a little bit um, aside from it because you have got this knot what we're going to do now is I'm going to go forwards just a bit you'll see I've come up away from the corner that's because I'm going to back stitch into the corner now so make sure everything's lining up pull through make sure that corner's nice and tight and go back to the corner and start your stitching You want to make sure your stitches are, oh, are really nice and small. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise I was out of frame there. I was trying to look closer so I could see the line because the line isn't very dark. Had I have pressed on my pencil a little bit harder than it would have been. Not normal that your thread is darker than the pencil as well so a bit hard to see so I hope you can see just how fast the whole stitching process actually is compared to English paper piecing there's lots of different um, designs that you can do with this any quilting design that you could do EPP or even by machine can be done with this method it's absolutely brilliant it has been around for centuries you know it is how quilts were traditionally hand pieced when it wasn't done with the papers um, so yeah it's a tried and tested method so again we're just going to do a locking stitch sometimes I like to do a proper knot but I think that is really secure I haven't had any issues so far and there you go and then all you're going to do is now again the blue I don't think I, oh, I drew it on another one um, blue is your center so you'll start here right sides together and stitch around in the in the exact same way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this off and then I'll show you how to iron the back because um, the pieces at the back the seams can be a little bit proud <laughs> they stand up quite proud so I'll show you how to iron that and then you'll be all ready to go ahead and make your placemat or anything that you choose to with this patchwork so I've pieced all of that together and you can see what I mean about the edges they are quite dimensional until you press them down but as you can see you can't see any of the stitches and it's really nice and strong obviously when I pull it out like that you can see a little shadow of the black but um, you won't do so I've got my ironing mat here I'm going to place it face down I've got my little mini iron and I don't like to press the seams open what I like to do is sort of do them just flattened usually <laughs> but for the purpose of this video we'll lay them nicely um, so from the outside just flatten it out go in there and then just spiral them round And then I'll just give it a nice press. I 
the only thing that I have noticed is that there's always like a little bit more of a lip I guess you get that with machine sewing but when you look on this one you know you can see the uh, the folds whereas I guess EPP the two butt up to each other so you don't actually notice that as much but yeah there we have it so that is that all done like I said the next video will be on templates um, that you can use to create more complex shapes or just any templates that are available that will be on Saturday that I do that video and then we'll move on to a video on some different shapes as well so I really hope you've enjoyed this video and do leave me a comment to let me know if you'll be um, doing this and if you do any hexagons like this don't forget to tag me over on Instagram I'll share your work onto my stories bye